Ladies and gentlemen, the First Lady of Namibia, Her Excellency, Mrs. Pohamba. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. I am honored to be a part of investing in our future at the U.S. Africa Leaders Summit, and I am delighted that my country, the Republic of Namibia, will be one of the next two countries of focus for pink ribbon, red ribbon. Investing in and committing to our future, the theme of this summit is a noble goal that all humanity must embrace. Part of the strategy for implementing this goal must be protecting all women. We are here today to witness a commitment, a commitment to the future of one 0.1 million Namibian women and the 134,000 adolescent girls, a commitment to, to a cervical cancer-free Namibia. A cervical cancer is a growing health problem in our country and ranks as the second most frequently diagnosed cancer among women. Breast cancer is number one. Every year, 132 Namibian women are diagnosed with cervical cancer, and half of them die from the disease. In any country, losing one woman, woman is cause for concern. But in our country, with our small population, the impact is particularly devastating. As a nurse by profession, I experienced this firsthand while caring for Namibian women and their families over many years. These statistics are playing out daily in our cities and towns, in families all across our country. And because of the special vulnerability of women and girls to HIV, and because women with high, H, high with HIV are so much more vulnerable to developing cervical cancer than their HIV negative peers, the problem is even more pressing. The good news is that cervical cancer is an, is an avoidable disease. And we can stop the disease through every effective screening and treatment programs, such as the C and test single vist approach promoted by Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon. I'm so grateful for the commitment of Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon partners. Thanks to their work with our government and local NGOs. Namibian doctors and nurses already received training and saving our women. In fact, during the third week of July, these newly trained health workers show 239 women, 15 of whom tested positive for pre-cancerous lessons. 11 of these were treated the same day and four were referred to further treatment. These women, these are women whom if, I, if, if left unscreened might have developed cancer. Women who benefited from this treatment were able to know their health status and returned to their families with hope for the future. I am encouraged and inspired that our government is committed to women's health 
and particularly its emphasis on preventing cervical cancer, which includes the introduction of vaccination of young girls against the human papilloma virus that causes the disease. We are aware that we need to build the capacity of our health workers to do this, and they are ready and able. As the current chairperson of the African First Ladies Forum Against Cervical Breast and Prostate Cancer, I saw our country's readiness to tackle this disease head on as we successfully brought together leaders from around the world from 20th to 22nd July to discuss how to end cervical cancer by 2030. I believe that Namibia can be a role model in the fight against cervical cancer. We have been successful in controlling the burden of HIV and reducing deaths from the disease, thanks in large, in large part for support from the American people through PEPFE. We can do the same with cervical cancer, and we will, and we must. Our new partners at, Ring, at the Pink Ribbon, Red Ribbon are standing with us in this battle as part of our collective preventive focus for all women. Working together, I am strongly convinced that we can drastically reduce deaths from HIV and the women's cancer. I thank you for your attention.